you want a leadership book? I'm going to tell you, I interviewed him, Keith Rosen, R-O-S-E-N. He wrote a book on sales leadership. Don't have to be in sales, even though we all are. If you are a leader, if you are a business owner, whether you like it or not, you're in sales. And he said this, and I love this in the book. He said, people create the mindset. Mindset shapes the behavior. Behavior defines culture. And ultimately, culture determines success. That's why the primary business, listen to me, that's why the primary business objective is to make your people more valuable. That's ROI, guys. That's it. Make your people more valuable. Listen to the previous podcast about being narcissistic and fishing for compliments. It's the last one we had yesterday. Today, I'm telling you how to break that. Make your people more valuable. Take a six and turn it into an eight. Take a four and make it a seven. Take an eight and make it a 10. Be creative. Pour yourself into finding out what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? How can I, as a leader, help them be better? You coach and you coach and you coach and you 2X, 5X, 10X, those that you lead, what's going to happen to your organization? That 10X that you turn three people into is going to turn into 30X for sales, is going to turn into 30X for product development. Whatever you're doing, it's going to scale huge. There is nothing more important that you can do and then, and that is to make, as, as Keith Rosen says, to make your people more valuable. Make them more valuable. I cannot repeat this enough. This is such gold. This is so good as a leader. Make your people more valuable. How do you do that? You're like, Jason, how do I do that? I said, and I say it in every stink and podcast over and over and over again, Get books on coaching. Understand as a leader, that is your primary job, is to coach those. If you see someone that seems kind of down and out, pull them into your office, have a coaching conversation with them. You ask two, three, four questions, they do 80% of the talking, you do 20, and that 20% is questions. Stop thinking as a leader that you need to talk constantly. You let those around you understand and gain clarity through the questions that you ask and that sets them up for where they need to be the mindset and what did he say he said people create the mindset mindset shapes behavior those team members that you have there's a mindset that each of them that they know when they come in monday morning the mindset that you've programmed them to have at work and they know exactly how to appease you. And you need to eliminate this narcissistic way that you think that it needs to be in your organization because you're the leader. What does the team want? You need to ask that to them. What would they prefer? What do they want? How can they be productive? Ask them, how can we 10x what we're doing right now? Have a meeting. Ask them that. What's the mindset? Because Mindset shapes behavior. If they're operating at a four or five and you're frustrated constantly and you're putting out fires and they're all dependent on you because you're a narcissistic leader, guess what's going to happen? The behavior is going to be shaped in that direction. It's going to be shaped. And if you like that and you're all about you and that's what you want and you're narcissistic, I think that you should cut this podcast off right now because this podcast is not for you. It's not. As a leader, if you want to be narcissistic and you want to make it all about you, there's plenty of other growth-oriented podcasts that are out there that will tell you how awesome you are and how amazing you are and what an amazing leader you are. And you can go listen to those and go read those books. But if you want to find the truth, then you need to understand that people are more valuable than anything that you have. 
behavior defines culture and ultimately culture determines success. The mindset, the behavior, the culture. That's what you focus on. If you're a leader and you want success and you're not having success right now, you either have a problem with mindset, behavior, or culture. And I would guarantee you it's all three. And that needs to be your primary focus. If it's not, if it's not, if it's not, then you're failing. And I'm going to say that. I know that's not popular nowadays, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're failing as a leader. You're not being a leader. Make your people, I've said this like eight times already, make your people more valuable. When you begin to do that, what happens? When you begin to make your people more valuable, they're going to see through coaching and its positive attitude, not getting on to them and telling me how bad they are. They're going to see the expectation that you put onto them in a positive way, and they're going to perform. And if they don't, you're going to fire them. And you're going to get others that are focused on the mission and the vision that you've created, not on you and the expectations and rules and regulations that you put into place. I can talk to employees left and right, and I'll ask them, and then they will start off with, well, you know, Jim likes it this way. You know, she likes it this way. He likes it this way. So we, we, we do it this way because they want it this, 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 and this. Why? It's so toxic, guys. I'm telling you. Your people are more valuable than you think. If your people are operating, if you had 10 people operating at an eight in the workplace, you would not be able to handle as a leader. It would be more successful than you could ever imagine. Don't give coaching a week or two and then call it good. You have to make this a commitment. It takes time to restructure people. You've spent years and years and years programming them with fear, rules, and regulations that you've put out there, you've made it all about you. It takes a while to decentralize and make it about them. So don't expect something to happen in two, three months. Well, you know, I'm dependent on this and this. I'm telling you right now, you will see success in the first three months. If you commit to this, you will see success in the first three months. And I'm talking about a return on investment. I'm also talking about filters in place and shaking people out that haven't been doing shit, that have been appeasing you, but as far as work goes, it's cool to make you feel good, but then you look at their numbers, there's nothing there. They're just zombies working. And those are the people that you need to get rid of. Those are the people you need to hire fast. You know this. You know this. Just get fast, 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 fast. Oh, this person's not. Let's let them go. Let's let them do what they need to do. They're not happy here. We can have a coaching conversation with them. Oh, we've had two coaching conversations. Oh, we've had three coaching conversations. They're still not performing. They're still not happy. Gone. Let's hire somebody else fast, fast, fast. Let's move, move, move. We may have to go to two, three, four people to get the team exactly where we need to be. But if the focus is on people are more valuable, we're going to focus on the people, not what your biases is or how you feel or the emotion or the hunch. Artificial intelligence is destroying hunches. Hunches are so wrong. Your hunch that you think after 30 years that you think is good Guess what? The data shows hunches are like 40%. Educated hunches are like 43%. That means 50% of the time you're wrong. And I'm being harsh for a reason. Because I want to shake you out of this and make it where you understand that it is not about you. As a leader, Jesus is the prime example. He made it about his twelve. And those 12 disciples brought Christianity to the world. Whether you believe in that or not, it does not matter. 
decentralization. He took off. He was there for three years. He trained him for three years, took off. Guess what happened? They changed the world. He told him that. He said, you're going to do greater things than I even I did. He said that. It's in the Bible. It's amazing. They denied him. They had tremendous amounts of issues and problems. They were getting fights with each other. And still, at the end of the day, what happened? The training that he did. He had three years, and he poured himself into those 12. And he constantly put filters out there, filters, filters. People left constantly. He didn't have time for those. It's not time to appease people or to make people, and I'm going to judge them whether they like me or not. I have a mission, a purpose, and a vision, and this is what we're going to accomplish. And you're either for me or against me. That's how it goes, guys. And you need to understand, and I'm going to say it over and over again, and I encourage you to buy this book. It's called Sales Leadership by Keith Rhodes. And you can also look at a podcast I did a long time ago. One of my first podcasts, because I look up to him so much. I interviewed Keith Rhodes and was so nervous. So it would be funny for you guys to hear me um, being nervous. But I had read the book. I'd asked a ton of questions. And so it seemed like he enjoyed it. Uh, it was good, but I'm telling you right now, get the book, understand it, and understand that you, your number one business objective is to make your people more valuable. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. And thanks to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share and go to ABQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.